It's the Doomed and Stoned Podcast with your host, Billy Goat. Hang out with us for the next few as we explore the music and the stories of the heavy underground. Brought to you by doomedandstoned.com. the Doom and Stone Show. I'm Billy Goat, your host. With me is John Guest, who's joining me for episode number seven of our season six as we dig into more of our favorite finds from the past week. John, welcome back. Hey, good to be back there, Billy. Awesome, man. So tell us a little bit about the opener. I know you chose it. Stone Aurora. Did I say that correctly? <laughs> I always I don't know. Well, we never know nowadays, one. but I think it's maybe Stone Error. Oh, I, um, I always uh, thought it was more like Stone Aurora, but I mean, but you're saying Stone Error. That's, that's what I thought, but dude, I'm not that great at this, uh, the names of these bands sometimes. But uh, Sometimes yeah, they never... deliberately choose them that way to, to mess with you. Sure, sure. Uh, well, they're from Krakow, Poland. Yes. Or that Polish scene that's uh, gotten bigger, quite a bit bigger over the last couple of years. And I remember seeing this band... And I remember looking them up on Facebook because I liked a couple of their, their videos. And they had like 200 followers. <laughs> it was like, like, literally like a brand new, not close to a new band. And so I've kept up with these guys pretty good. I really like, really love their second album. Uh, all their stuff's been good, but the second album's really good. 
But this song, they do a remake of Synchronicity by Police. And uh, when I saw the video, heard the song, I was like, that's an interesting take. All right, let's get it started that way. I loved it. Yeah, I thought they did a great job with it. And I'm a big fan of their last album, especially. That's the one that really won me over. And I was Real like, good one, too. Yeah. Like, super good. Yeah. 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 It, it fell just right outside my top 40 for the year last year. I, I do a top 40, like the <laughs> cheesy. But uh, and that album is a good one. It's, it was a little bit of a grower, that, that last one. So I'm interested. Then have you sampled this new one? I haven't yet. It just came out. Yeah, I've just heard maybe two songs off of it. Uh, most songs are in their native tongue this time. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, but this one, uh, this one's got an interesting vibe to it, so that's another one to revisit at some point in time. But that's, uh, Fearless Get the Party Started with Something People New song, but maybe didn't know the artist. I like it. I'm glad you chose it. It's a good one. Cool, man. All right, well, let's get rolling and, and tell us what you got on the menu for the, the first segment here okay well the first band is a band that uh really their last album um uh, catapulted them to like a next level i would say so elephant tree just released a new song uh their second song on their new album that will be coming out here or is out a uh, bird is the song so you know an interesting one i looked them up because i'm like yeah they're from england but i look them up and they had like england Canada, New Zealand. So I don't know what kind of, uh, if it's a collaboration or if these guys are, you know, what the background is in that. But that was interesting. That's the first time that I've thought of them as multinational, to be honest. Same here. I, I always thought they were all based in, in London, and maybe they were for a time, but they've kind right. of gone back so to. So it said that, who knows what. Where know. they started, yeah, who knows. But really loved it. Uh, both singles they put out with videos are really really well well done and i think they're finding their sound because if you go back to their first album it was a lot rougher and rough around the edges and then that the, their self-titled one really was a refined and kind of it kind of fits in that airspace with you know the, the space slugs of the world and the king buffalo and elder in that kind of space uh pretty easy too and not like overly heavy uh, elephant tree is it, it heavy at parts but other times a little bit ethereal and, and got a lot of space to it you know yeah a lot of people love that album they swear by it it's one of their favorites of all time so they won a, a lot of souls with that one. they did they really did it was a big jump so this this album i've already had the good fortune of listening to it uh multiple times and it's a beauty i mean dare i say i might like it as much as King Buffaloes. So, mm. I like King Buffaloes a lot. That says me. So, I'm, I'm digging this one right now just as much. Uh, and it's a little thicker the album. It's eight or nine songs up there. Nice. So, that's the first one. Uh, then we dropped down to Italy, where we shipped over to Italy. Uh, Caleb, who's been a good veteran band uh, in the, the stoner kind of heavy rock realm. Uh, they got a seventh full length, I think, is coming out. But they did release this song, Corrupted. So we're going to be taking a listen to that. And, I mean, these guys have six full albums out, and they're all on Bandcamp for free. So that's Kalef, K-A-Y-L-E-T-H. And they're from Spain, I mean, from Italy, from Verona, Verona Italy. Um, and Italy, again, we'll even have another Italian one later, but there's some damn good bands over there. Oh, yeah, they're a I mean, standard. Particularly these last two or three years, it's like, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's, it's awesome to see some bands that still give their stuff away for free. I suppose they, they make most of their, their money off the the records, the, the physical mediums, you know. But Yeah, uh, I think that when they do that it's it's to increase your band base, you know, because people like free. And so people will give them a chance that they normally wouldn't. That used to and be that's the kind of the common that's the, well, I mean coming from board. someone who's done What's that? That used to be the common thinking across the board. You know, back in 2013, 14, 15, it seemed like everybody was giving their stuff away for free digitally. Yeah. Well, Just I mean, there's a lot doing it stance. even, there's a lot doing it right now. Um, a big, massive amount here in the last three to four months have been, hell, even Ripple did it on pretty 
pretty much the whole 219, 2019 um, catalog and did it for a few days and a number of other bands and it's a smart way to just get some other people into it mm-hmm. that aren't going to be into your band. They're not going to, you know, there's so many fringe people that just overlook this kind of music. They just keep going. They don't know who the name is. Right? They don't, you know, they shift on about while moments or something free. Some of these people jump on and they go, holy shit, that's really good, man. Oh, how come I haven't heard of them before? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, and then they go to their concert and then they buy merch. So it's, there's, you know, that's all part of the, unfortunately, it's part of the business in music that has to be completely looked at on a weekly, monthly basis. And uh, Kayla has decided to do this. <laughs> all right. Yeah, but this song is really, really a strong, uh, cool one. The video is spacey. It's got a whole uh, cool animation and space going on. And it, it's, the band's always had uh, such an interesting styles and blends. Uh, definitely some Caius in there, but then there's like almost more of the, the you know background spacey kind of effects that they have also. What, what's your take on this band? They've always been no, a I'm... space stoner rock band. That's been kind of their their thing. Right. That's their niche. So that that's kind of what's always set them apart. Cal L is kind of like that. To Cal L too. Yep. I, I really, 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 really like like that band too. They they were gonna come over here and play at one time. Maybe they did. They did actually. They, they yeah, came over. That's right. They played like uh, the West Coast maybe about two years ago. I remember that they had a show set up for uh, Vegas. Um, they were doing it with Wizard or someone, and they yeah. ended up canceling it. Couldn't make it over here. It's like it's, that's a uh, another really good band. Yeah, Kayla, you know, it's consistent and. I think if you like grunge, or you like stoner rock, or if you like heavy rock, if they're a band that's worth checking out. So, but the last one I'm really excited about, um, the band Interstellar. Uh, Jason uh, is the front man, and pretty much the guy who writes and does most of the stuff for this band. Uh, he's out of LA, but I believe like part of his band is like up in Sacramento or some other city. Um, so it's been a little while since they've done any stuff, and I think he's been hanging on the low a little bit for the last few years. But he popped this over to me the other day, and they saw him down to the well. And uh, Interstellar's not really, I wouldn't call them a stoner rock band. Uh, it's like you and me were talking about off air. They're a heavy rock band. Uh, they're one that has a definite 90s influence, a la Soundgarden, Alice in Chains, that kind of thing, but yet it has that shift ability his songs are not um, always of similar nature so there's different speeds and, and and writing styles within it this one right here is definitely a slow mover uh, but emotional and heavy really really good yeah they're known for that aren't they just that kind of grounding he's got some a lot he's got some catchy um, he's got some catchy stuff in some of his older in some of his stuff off the last album that it has a lot more accessibility while uh, this one more definitely this one like like something like Transylvania just stud another really good band that has a very strong 90s feel but not the overproduced feel and that's kind of the way I see it with Interstellar too you know what I mean nice yeah these guys have been yeah. rocking for a long time it's good to have them back and I guess it's been maybe four years since their last album so they haven't been gone that long but that's a good while. That's a good little bit, but it's, uh, I mean, they had like, I think it was an EP and then an album. So, uh, but, but their stuff's good, so it's great to see Jason and the boys getting back. So let's, uh, let's give a little listen and start it off with Alvin Tree. Let's do. We'll be back with more here on the Doom and Stone Show.
Down to the Well is the name of that song by Interstellar out of Los Angeles. We also heard from Calith from Italy with Corrupted. And Elephant Tree brought us a new single, their second, from the upcoming full-length Habits. And now we move to three that are on my list as we introduce you to Lord Loud. For some of you, this will be a reintroduction if you got into their 2017 album, Passe Paranoia. The new album isn't coming out until September, and so very unusual for a band to introduce their material this early in the year. But kind of smart too, because I found it and I hyped it up and then asked if we could debut a single and the band said yes so this past week we got to do that at doomedandstone.com and now we're doing it here on the doomed and stone show it's called without you and uh it features chris allison on guitar and vocals and michael feld on drums great team i think if you're into um anything that ty seagull do, does fuzz or otherwise you'll like what lord loud is up to on this new album um it's fuzzy it's um, a little bit wild. It's also kind of trippy and, you know, kind of stumbling over yourself drunk sometimes. But uh, all in all, I think it's a pretty fun album. And so Timid Beast is the name of it. I love the album art, which Chris Allison also did. It's kind of got an art deco style. It's got a rabbit being surrounded by a rose, but the thorns are kind of in there too. So it's like... You can never go wrong with a rabbit on a cover. Uh, I don't see enough rabbits. Last one I saw was on Broom's album, Rabbits. The I Francisco saw um, a multiple six-foot-tall rabbits at Myrtle Beach at a thing called Bud Fest when I was in college. Uh-huh. <laughs> and we, were, we, were, we never stopped smoking for three straight days. I don't know if I've ever, ever done that before. And uh, that was kind of the trippy uh, six-foot-tall rabbit. I love it. <laughs> yeah, but we never found Alice. So. Well, that's an eternal quest, though, right? perhaps you spend your whole life looking for alice well or something who who's the who's the one that you're i'll confess one thing i've never read that damn book alice in wonderland ever i've never so even seen the cartoon it. maybe i've seen the scraps of the cartoon but i can't remember how it even ends maybe i just got oh. lost in a rabbit hole of my own when i was a kid but i just never got into it yeah i i've watched it I, i've seen it uh as a kid and as an adult, I think. I love it as a metaphor, uh, but, you know, I'm still kind of... It's trippy, man. I'm chasing the plot of that damn thing. Just jump in. <laughs> Got a little time right now. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, you're uh, right, yeah, actually. Lord the Lord Loud Band, uh, it's, yeah, it's got a nice little uh, mix. Two-piece band again, huh? Another duo, yeah. I'm really into duos. You In fact, are. Uh, working on a new compilation that just features Latin duos. Kind of sounds romantic, wow. but um, Roman Tamayo of Venom Sabati put it uh-huh. together for me, and I'm going to invite one more band to it, and then we're going to just put it out. But um, it's cool. just all two pieces, and I've seen some interesting one. I've seen uh, bass and and drum duos. Yeah, I've seen that, of course. Yeah, like Swamp Ritual out of Montana, and I really love. They played Doomed and Stone Fest, and you think, how can they make this actually work? Come on. And then you see royal blood? You're the Cobra, piece? you know, bass oh, and yeah, drums. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, they made it work. <laughs> yeah. But yep. um, yeah, I love I love duos. I love I guess I've always been a fan of the closer you get to like a, a solo effort, the more difficult it seems to me to pull off all because I'm a pianist, you know, and the idea uh-huh. of a piano is to reduce in one instrument what an orchestra can do. The full range from top to bottom, right. and then I get it. one performer gets to try to pull that off. You know, it huh. doesn't sound as grand as a symphony, but you can certainly play a symphony on there. And I've always admired that DIY ethic, I guess. And then, huh. uh, you know, but the true test I think of a musician is can you collaborate with another musician? And then that's where the duo comes in. And and sure, it sounds a little thinner than a trio or a, a quartet or a quintet for that matter, but I've always been fascinated by it for some reason. Don't ask me why. That's interesting. I always just ask just to learn about people, so different people, different uh, yeah. stuff. I, I've definitely noticed more listening to two piece bands. Uh, isn't Royal Blood? 
they at least were a two piece. I'm not sure about that. I think you're talking about the Georgia band. No, I'm talking about the band that's kind of crossed over now. Like their first album's like really good. This band Royal Blood is like really good. Now they're on the radio, but they're Oh, I'm thinking album. Royal Thunder, sorry. Yeah, no, no, not that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't now, think Royals. I'm. Somebody gotta keep up with the Royals. I gotta keep up the Royals, yeah. The fuck, man? <laughs> Fucking back to the Royals. Oh, jeez, I'm behind. I've never been. Lords Island, you pick that up. I mean, there's Lords. Yeah, uh, I'm into the Lords, but it's the whole feudalism thing. I like like feudalism. I just don't like the the monarchy. All right, all right. Whoa, whoa. What the fuck do you mean, feudalism? (laughs) I've always been into, you know, the Lord of of an acreage. I like the Lord of the Thighs by. uh... Harrison, that's where I'm standing on things. There you go. That's my one of my favorite songs that involves Lord is Lord of your yeah, And I grew up, you know, in evangelical Christianity where we called Jesus Lord. So Oh man. You see another Lord out there, of course you're gonna pay attention. Like who is this other Lord here? It's Lord Loud. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. I like your I like your philosophy on that, dig it. I made yeah, it up on the spot, but thank you. Oh, well, it sounds good to me. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, you shifted to this next song, uh, this next band, out of Belgium. Where yeah. did you find these guys? Tell me about them. Oh, they found me. Uh, I guess I wasn't looking deep enough. We did a compilation last year called Doomed and Stone in Belgium, and the thing with my compilations is I always try to get a local to work on getting the bands together and and finding who's who, and, and just the uh-huh. relational piece is so important. I don't want to come in as an outsider and have everybody right. be you know really suspicious. What's this guy trying to do with our music? You know, I I want somebody I know to go to the local people and and help to round up you know interest awesome. and, and effort. And so far, it's worked really well for me doing that. And when people realize, okay, this guy isn't trying to make money off of our our music, he's just trying to promote the scene. Right. He's doing this for fun. They're like, oh yeah, sure. And so this band, Gnome, contacted me way after the fact. Somehow they didn't get onto the first compilation. And they didn't straight up ask me to be there, but they did mention, you know, that they didn't get on there and, um, you know, please check out their music. They didn't, you know, ask any more than that. I was like, you know what, do you want to be on this compilation? Because I really like your sound. And I thought, it just has enough extra effort beyond your standard run of the mill stoner space rock band that I just I liked it I thought it was pretty no. pretty excellent yeah like yeah. the front yard young thing I right? think so yeah at least on their Facebook page they seem to be claiming that that front yard gnome as their icon so I think they're going uh, with it uh, yeah creepy that creepy yeah just like that other one is that old <laughs> looks kind of like yeah, a Santa more... Claus gnome with like I don't know um air goggles or whatever, uh, aviation goggles. Oh, that's strange. Yeah, but anyway, I like them. I thought they were pretty cool. Alright. And, yeah, yeah, uh, cool so sound. we're gonna play the song that I chose for the compilation, although I will stress on the the album this came from, uh, there are so many good choices um, that I could have picked the second track or the third or the fourth. It's called Father of Time. came out in 2018. And if you have not... If you're looking to discover something that truly is going to be a discovery, because very few people, relatively speaking, know about it, check out Father of Time by the band Gnome, G-N-O-M-E. And you can check them out first and foremost um, on the podcast. We're going to play the track Earthen Dweller. And then the third and final one before we break is from a band out of Sweden called... Gaupa, G-A-U-P-A. We're having spelling lessons today because <laughs> these bands are from all over the world and and they aren't necessarily intuitive in terms of... If you took hook, Hooked on Phonics, it's not going to help you when you're looking at the international stoner doom scene. You're going to have to learn to spell it the way they do. So uh, Galpa is the name, and it basically means cat in Swedish. And um, they came out oh. with an album last year that I really liked. Actually, it doesn't mean cat exactly means lynx which is kind of a cat right oh wow i think i don't know is lynx its own animal no it's just part of the whole feline is it okay well, I, i'm not an expert in yeah, lynx but that's ears, right? that's the We're literal meaning lynx. is lynx wow. yeah they're a five-piecer 
well, let's call them progressive stoner rock. Um, there's elements of doom in there, there's elements of folk, there's definitely a psychedelic vibe, but it's all swirled together in this real characteristic fashion. What brings it all and solidifies it as one is the singer, Emma Nansland. Uh, and Emma is just like one of the craziest singers I have encountered in this genre. And you won't necessarily hear it on the song I'm going to play for you, but check out their self-titled debut from 2019. It will blow your ever-loving mind. Um, and I'm just going to quote myself on something because I wrote, after hearing their first album, I, I wrote, it's unconventional, both beautiful and bizarre. Galpa is absolutely transfixing the singing and songwriting is smart and sexy filled with vocal nuances and an extraordinary range that will make you want to give it a standing ovation from whenever you're sitting i was really passionate when i wrote that i don't write that about very many bands so i want you to check out this band they just came out with their second album um on by location records and the uh the name of that is, well, the second album has a lot in Swedish. So, um, Feberdrome, I think is how you pronounce it. Probably not, but that's my hooked on phonics way of pronouncing it. All right. We can't get everything right. We're not supposed to get everything right. Yeah. One of the finest things that Bucky and I used to do when we did a regular weekly show, uh, we did a monthly show, actually, we did the Doom charts, but I would always go to Google Translate and put in these... (laughs) Things and so let's see how we should pronounce the album title here. See, I couldn't say that. It says it really slow the second time. I can't do that. That's too much like the Swedish chef on the Muppets. But I guess that's that's how it's done, all right. But that's the name of the album. That Swedish chef his main thing was uh, Swedish meatballs, wasn't it? Oh, that whole Muppets thing used to give me the creeps when I was a kid, and I don't know, there was something about Muppets, period, that were just creepy as, as F, but, um... Why? I don't know, dude. It just always creeped me the fuck out. I am not, um... I'm not a big fan of Mimes, but it more makes me, uh... anxious, or maybe even a little bit, um, uh, violent. Maybe. So I don't like seeing that in public. <laughs> Maybe it was um, Gonzo that creeped me out the most. That hook nose of his that just he just looked. He had the beady eyes and he had that um, umbrella nose and just and then everybody else in there in some way or another just freaked me out. You know, Swedish Chef right. actually was probably one of the more normal ones, but he had uh, some kind of a. Oh, well, he had those chickens, right? And they freaked me out. I was just too young for it. Was the the thing? My parents right. shouldn't have been letting me watch that. <laughs> Maybe it was because they were so lifelike. You know, they crossed that realm between is this real or is this not? Cartoon, clearly not real and very cute. Muppets exist in a three-dimensional physical world, and in my young mind, that was just too surreal for me. And they interact directly sometimes with humans. They do, yeah. Yeah. So, another reason that Sesame Street and I didn't quite get along as much. (laughs) Let's not get into that now. (laughs) Now, the name of this song... Uh, let's hear the translation of it, because I can't say it. Oh, oh this is going to be fun. Mjöksira. Oh, so what is it? I don't want to pretend I'm making fun of the language. I'm not. I just can't say it. Uh, Mjöksira, or something like that, is the name of the okay. song that we're going to hear. And I, I did translate the meaning, and it means lactic acid. So yeah. I think the song is completely in Swedish, um, as is most of this album. I'm not sure if the first one was actually that way. But I'll tell you what, John and I were talking about this offline too, about he is still kind of having a hard time um, dealing with music that's not in English because he likes to sing along with it. I kind of listen for other things. So as long as the vocals are approached like an instrument, then I can kind of appreciate the same way I could appreciate like a guitar riff or a bass riff or... Well, I think it's interesting because there's a lot of people that obviously are... Uh, aren't huge fans of that that are from America or whatever because for whatever reason the language has uh, become an accessible one that everyone seems to do and so I think there's a, a you know I'm probably in a, a branch of people that just by default 
I don't give it a whole lot of chance. Yeah, uh, yeah, I can, yeah, I can see but that. But the Demonada, who I really, really like, and they got like a little bit of both. And I can put that album on and be all good with mm -hmm. it because the music is so good. <laughs> right, right. I am a vocals guy. I like my good vocals overall. At least when I think it's good vocals, you know. Well, this but, might uh, just win you over. This band right here, this girl can sing. Oh, she can absolutely. Yeah, Emma is a wow. gem. Really good. Well, let's take a break. We'll listen to it. We'll come back and hear more from John when we return on the Doomed and Stone show. <laughs>
From Sweden, that was Galpa with Moksira. And Gnome brought us Earthen Dweller from Belgium. And right here in the U.S., West Coast, was Lord Loud with Without You. John, take it over now. Give us your your favorite three for the third segment. Hey, we're talking about Lords. What about Lord Foul? Lord Foul, it's been a while since I've listened to them, but I really like them. They're very solid. They have a new album coming out or something? It seems like they had one earlier this year or late last year. Everything's blurring together. I'm serious. It's just yeah. crazy. Yeah, we, I have no it, sense it, of time. It is crazy. Yeah, I exactly agree. Sometimes it's hard to keep up, but uh, sometimes I blow myself away when I actually am able to keep up. That's, yeah, someday you got to tap yourself in the back like, oh, hey, that, that, that's amazing you even remembered that. Oh, okay. But most of the time we're, we're going, oh, fuck. They've got yeah. one coming out on the 24th of April. Uh, called, on Smallstone, right? Yeah, Glorious Babylon. Yeah, that should be cool. Yeah. I don't know, I dug some of their stuff in their last album for sure. But um, we're going to kick off this segment, my three. Uh, three from three very different places. So we start off with Super Naughty, the band Super Naughty, from Livorno, uh, Italy. All right, another Italian band, my second one of the night. Uh, the name of the song is called Big B. It just was released as a video uh, like a day or two ago. So it's on Argonauta Records, their new album. And um, this is their second release. So they did one, I think it was maybe two years ago, and it's pretty good. So Super Body kind of has a grunge meets stoner kind of blend feel. And uh, so you got a little bit of everything in there. Uh, a little bit of Caius, a little bit of Soundgarden, a little bit of this, but in the end, very solid riff rocking, good vocals, cool, cool song stuff. So I think that's going to be a good one to light the fire of these last three, which are all heavy ripping stuff, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, Sweden next to, I'm sorry, um, Italy next to Sweden and Greece, I think, have one of the strongest emerging stoner rock scenes. I, yeah, well, I'm loving Spain, too, even. Oh, sure. <clears throat> and it, it, I mean, there's a bunch of them over there, but uh, Greece, <laughs> that'd be an understatement right now. Even. We talked about that last show. We did, yeah. But, but Italy is, we're noticing more and more, um, has some good stuff. So Super Naughty is the band. You gotta check them out. It's a weird name, but uh, <laughs> just click on it and uh, take a listen, hopefully, tonight. Their, their last album was really solid, so there's probably some stuff you'd even like on that as well. Uh, the, the second band is from your up in your neck of the woods. That's right. Uh, the band Cobra Thief, right out of Portland. Um, they got a bunch of stuff out. This will be their this is their fourth album they put out already. It's hard to believe, but they've been very busy. They did some like um, like cover tunes and stuff on some of their early maybe like early albums. I think that was the band that had a couple random ones on there. But uh, this album is a, just a super solid, hard rocking album. Uh, what would you describe some of the blends and influences? Well, I definitely hear some Caius and some Soundgarden. Um, they've referenced Mountain as an influence multiple times. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah, so. You know, that gives up some really heavy blues. It does. Fucking guitar right there right right yeah it's it's hard for me to pinpoint all of them but i think those are our three yeah. i definitely agree with the band on at least <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i really dig the song i mean i dig the, the album and so i had really got to figure out which one to put which one of those was the, the best and so i was about to play the first one but then i went with the song treason uh something a little bit kind of you know catchy in there uh that i kind of liked and it, it rocks so that's one of the, it's like the second to last song on the album so they have the album animal oxygen that's the new one so cobra thief that's all one word on this one no separate one yeah i noticed on the lp it's it's two words but on their band camp they're they're listing themselves now and actually on their facebook too as one word capital c capital right. t so yeah yeah, I will say I just looked up Super Naughty on face on um, just Google search, and if you don't put the parentheses around Super Naughty together, you will get Super Naughty Made, Super Naughty Show, Super Naughty This, and it's all in reference to like Super Naughty stuff, right? 
Um, better yet, put super naughty band, and that will get you where you want to go. And probably true with Cobra Thief. I'm guessing if I if I Google those as two separate words, well, actually, they've done a good job with their uh, SEO, so they're right there at the top. That's good. So super naughty, get on that, man. Good, good bands, both of them uh, good stuff out. Uh, Cover Thieves' earlier stuff is really rocking, also. But the last band is the one that uh, out of New Jersey, and I remember hearing their album a couple years back. Maybe it's like five, six song album. I think just like this one, and uh, it had a really good Black Sabbath sound to it. I mean, just no apologetic, but at the same time, it just sounded good. I re-listened to a number of their songs like over and over, and some were that good. So they just put this album out like like a week ago. So the name of the album is Holy Water. We're gonna play the song Holy Water. And uh, this boy's out of Jersey. We got Jersey and Portland, which are entirely different coasts for people that aren't from uh, America. They're like entirely very far apart. <laughs> on one side of the country and the other. Different kind of thing. And then we got way over there in Italy uh, for Super Naughty. So we got some wild We're covering stuff some on. distance. Got quite the distance. Yeah, I, I really love the album cover for Holy Water by Sleeping Village. It's Sleeping Village. Yeah, it's Reference got to uh, a Sabbath song. It reminds me of Black Sabbath One, um, only it's not like sort of a obscure Mary looking figure in the cover. Um, I, I say Mary. I've always thought of it as sort of like a a Mary Magdalene type of character, but whatever. Um, it's a woman. This one is um, a little further into the woods, a little deeper, kind of into uh, what's the big, the Jersey Devil uh, is the big uh, monster over there yeah. in New Jersey. So he's in Jersey Devil territory. And there's kind of like a, a, a darkened cave. There's a, a fallen tree, and there's this figure in a black robe and this this animal mask, and it's creepy as fuck. <laughs> But it's also Jersey, kind of uh, beautiful too. <laughs> but it does remind me just the placement and everything, kind of of Black Sabbath one. It really did. These guys like Borgamthus that we had on last week. I, I just really like that. They're sounding a lot like Sabbath in, in some of the structure and, and vocals and things like that. But they create their own song. Yeah, I, and it, it actually sounds good. Right, I would. And you know, I'm able to get past if someone plays their influences closer i don't give a shit mm -hmm. if it sounds good. if it sounds good you can pull it off some people want to it, just yeah. constantly hear new things and all that i you know some musicians they get arrogant about it like oh yeah why you know, people don't want to hear the same old styles and things i'm like really they actually That's do weird. <laughs> you know it's what's creative and you know we're, we're doing it for the right reason i'm like man i just don't even let me know what's wrong with you right now the way i look at it, just, it is that these big mammoth bands like Soundgarden, Alice in Chains, um, Black Sabbath, Caius, they kind of tapped into the musical language and advanced it a little bit further. Electric Wizard is another one. Just Sleep is another one. Another monolithic band that just, they found an aspect of the musical realm that they were able to excavate and bring out in more vivid detail. And now we discovered something new in the musical alphabet. And so when bands tap into that musical alphabet, as like as like you said, they're doing it well and they're they're doing it true to you know their their own talents, then I I can respect that. And yeah. uh, to Sleeping Village, I didn't really think of them as any sort of uh, a Black Sabbathy sounding band. I hear the influence Not on though definitely. Not as much as the one before this. Yeah, I, I hear the influence definitely, and I think of it coming from that same alphabet or that same realm or however you want to visualize it but yeah. uh, they're definitely they're definitely going for something that's all theirs yeah i think, think that you know for a lot of people what's important is the music yeah. and you know when there's ultra critics involved that sometimes involve musicians themselves are the worst critics of other bands. <laughs> it's kind of no like kidding. <laughs> hidden thing sometimes, you know? And so people trying to you know, just dismiss some styles in general, they go, oh yeah, it's some Sabbath thing. They're like, no, it's not. Not this one, <laughs> sorry. You know, in this case, I'm like, yeah, it is. Do you like Black Sabbath? Yeah. Well then come over here. 
<laughs> for fans of Black Sabbath. Right, <laughs> Sometimes right. people are like so shut out immediately, and you're like, what? <laughs> it's new music, man. Support good music. Oh, they're not from here or something. You're like, what? Come on. You gotta support any band. You keep projecting out supporting good music. Just it's gotta... always a catch-22 for me when I reference other bands in my reviews because on yeah. the one hand you need those markers to know what realm of the musical language this is in is this taylor swift ish or is this black sabbath ish that makes a huge difference in what you decide on a given day to listen to or at a given time of day at least if you're right. into both but then yeah, when i do mention those bands i do occasionally get you know criticism oh another blah 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 well, because some people are negative and you know, it's one of these things that I, I started realizing not that long ago, it kind of came back to me. You know, you know, it kind of kicked me in the head, and I'm like, why do I give a fuck? <laughs> Just quickly use your brain, analyze what you see. These, these, these people that have a constant pattern of being negative about, you know, suggesting music to them is is a person who's, you know, closed off to at least the person trying to talk to them about it. Potentially right. everyone, you know what I mean? So you give up. I give up more easy nowadays because, you know, I don't want to go overboard and turn someone off of good music because I'm like, hey, how you like it? You know, it's the catch-22 because uh, some people will just move on to the next thing, you know? Sure. Yeah, and I don't, I don't even bother. How do good bands get out there unless people are, have it thrusted in front of them and then they go, oh, yeah. The, the neg negative people have a default pattern of always saying, no, we're immediately questioning and then and ducking out quick. Mm -hmm. So it's just, you know, it, those people have more problems than just, you know what I mean, just us. Yeah, they're just generally they negative automatically in their communication the on the internet. Side to do. Yeah. But yeah, I think the Sleep Village, I, I think it's a really, really strong album. Uh, it just came out. So the album's Holy Water, and the song is Holy Water. So let's, let's dive into the Holy Water, shall we, Billy? Let's do. Back in moments on the Doomed and Stone Show.
We're back for our fourth segment. We just heard Holy Water by Sleeping Village out of New Jersey. Cobra Thief from Portland, Oregon brought us Treason. And Super Naughty from Italy. Big B was the name of that song. And now we close out the show with three of mine. And I've kind of saved the heaviest for last. You did? We were kind of on a good, upbeat vibe. And I didn't want to kind of bring that down too much. So if you were kind of craving for some blood in your meat, now is your segment. (laughs) So fired up! That's right, and we're Some gonna blood in your meat <laughs> to a grinding fucking halt the times here. So this will be interesting. Well, the first one definitely has got that grit to it. Band called yep. Desert Storm out of Oxford, in the UK, and they just keep cranking out one great album after another. I feel like Doomed and Stone has grown up with this band together over the years. I remember when they were still really small, and now they're. You know they're strutting their stuff. They've they've got a right. a dedicated generational audience, and they're on the APF record label, which has turned out to be a really important label in the UK for giving these bands the outlet they need to the world. And Desert Storm, lo and behold, they've got music videos out there, and they're putting music videos out before the album's even out, and so they're getting some financing for this, which is awesome. The machine. How many, albums, how many albums they had? They uh, have. So I'm gonna have to count them, but I believe, oh, off no, the top of my head, they have at least off. four, maybe five. Um, and I might be overstating them. They may even have more than that. Uh, That's at least a lot. from a record standpoint, they have one, two, three, four, five, six. So this may be their seventh album, unless oh. some of those are our EPs. So. Okay. Um, That's cool. Yeah. Well, so at least seven records and. Um, maybe as many albums, maybe a little less. What would you call... Would you give me three tags on them. Hmm. So the name of this album is Omens, and I would seat them right between hard rock and heavy metal. They've got elements of both. Um, primarily gritty, sludgy vocals yeah. that tend toward southern metal. Um... <laughs> There's kind of a. Sludgy says all you need to know about. Yeah, there's kind of a UK. There's a slice of the UK heavy, heavy music scene that is just recognizably up tempo but gritty, sludgy vocals. Whereas in the US scene, maybe you'll get the sludgy stuff combined with the more doomy, slow stuff, um, or maybe a groovy, bluesy, uh, hard-edged band like. Uh, Bongzilla that will play at a slower, groovier tempo, but this is like, this is aggressive. Right. Yeah, for sure. For sure. But it's listenable. I'd say this is probably the closest yeah, thing yeah, that would good. cross over with a mainstream um, heavy metal audience. Uh, so, from the band uh, Desert Storm, we're going to hear The Machine from their upcoming album Omens. It's going to be out May 1st. And I think the five guys have done a really good job with this one. Afterwards, we're going to do a hop, skip, and a jump over to the Netherlands for a band called Fee, or Fee. I'm not sure how they pronounce it. I should probably ask them, but it's spelled P-H-E, back to our spelling lessons. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's Fee, but um, and I think that has some significance in religion, but I didn't really bother to track that down, so I'm probably going to... Oh. Someone's probably listening and saying, of course it does. What are you... Religious you didn't know? time of the year right now, man. I mean, yeah, I I'm uh, really shocked with your upbringing that you didn't do that. But, I don't know. Maybe. Uh, I think we're gonna be alright. Yeah. Yeah. It's there's so many acronyms these days. You can never know. Is this an acronym? Is this something else? Yeah, maybe it's not even. No. <laughs> yeah, fee fi fo fum or something like that. No, they go fo and they're big fans of fo. Could be. Maybe that's. I don't know anymore. Misspelling. Down yeah. Down. You know, I always feel it's so trite to ask a band about their name these days when I do an interview. So I, I forgot to ask them. I did an interview with them because <laughs> we premiered uh, an entire album by them just this past oh, cool. week. And I just realized I never asked them what their name meant. But uh, I can always circle back with them, I guess, and find out. Sometimes bands like to just leave it is what it is kind of thing. Yeah, and... yeah. It's just little details. <laughs> yeah. Hey, sometimes I'm fine with that. it's just little details. Um, I, I really found this album, uh, th- I mean, this song, um, which is brand new to me, 
uh, it'd be interesting. So I was like, oh, you know, I, I listened to the whole thing through and yeah, what, what uh, kind of uh, got some melodicness to it. Definitely. So it's I call it melodic doom. So it's okay. it's doom metal, slower paced. Think of Paul Bearer. It's not quite funeral doom though. It's more in the realm of epic doom, like Candle Mass, but it's more melodic than Candle Mass. It's not really going for those really high operatic, no. you know, vibrating um, choruses. <laughs> did, you, did you see who I put in there? Is what I kind of thought I heard. Did you see the little note I put? Ian Asbury, yeah. That's Asbury. what I, I heard some of that there. So I want other people listening to break down, which will be the song in the middle. Tell us who you think he sounds kind of like, at least. And my guess is going to be, at times, Ian Asprey. Yeah, his name is Rud Van den Hovel. And I'm sorry, I, I may have butchered your name as well. Why do you keep doing the name so much? I don't know. I, I don't know why I'd even try. But uh, the other guys are, are pretty simple, Paul and Marcel and so forth. But he's yeah. got to have the difficult name. But uh, <laughs> Rud? Rud, Rud has the talent of playing drums and singing vocals at the same time and doing oh. it in a very sensitive way which i think is extremely hard to do while you're drumming i don't know it's just me i've never drummed before but it just seems like such a full body intense mind body soul connection with that rhythm that you have to get into a trance and then to break yourself from that or to or to continue with that and have that extra dimension of mind to go into the spiritual realm of singing uh, that's that's talent. Get, get this, Billy. Get this. Yeah. I'm very fortunate to live in Vegas for many reasons. Been here for ten years and seen many, many unbelievable artists, musicians, shows. Uh, it, local talent wise, probably the guy I admire in town the most is Frankie Perez. Uh, he's been on. He's been been part of the soundtrack for Sons of Anarchy for a bunch of mm. it, including the Red Hot Chili Peppers uh, remake. That was him on vocals. Oh, wow. Like the man called The Foresters. But he lives here in Vegas and he was even on that album with that band that kind of did Apocalyptica. He was their vocalist like two albums ago. Okay. So th he was in a band called, th he created a band here or called Two Man Riot, but it was a three-piece band. Mm -hmm. And it was two guitars and it was Frankie on drums singing crazy and normally this guy is running around on stage and you know and, and all kinds of like he's very active and there he's just pumping away at the drums and he hit the drums kind of you know he had his microphone right there to the left of him yeah and it was intense i got a great video on that on that guy and, and they wrote great songs the guitarists were old school riff and rock and grooving stuff that very much you know connected with like store rock fans that's awesome now we get all in all sides yeah frankie's a I'm sorry if I went off topic, but that guy, Frankie Perez, is, is an amazing singer, an amazing performer, uh, just it, a stellar singer. Like, he's got a guy who could it, do, like, a whole hard rock thing that is based on these kind of styles, and they would even kill it. I mean, he's really good. Bang. Yeah, I mean, some and people I've just have that, that connection with their instruments, that they can play them together, play them separately, and and just uh, excel, right? And these so. are hard rocking songs. I mean, they weren't, you know, sure. slow ones uh, much at all. Mm -hmm. I think one of them, he was yeah, a little bit slower tempo and it picks up in the, into a, <laughs> a fire. And yeah, it's very, uh, you know, that kind of stuff, the, the drummer singer thing is interesting. Um, you know, Craig Riggs is an interesting character. Uh, singer for Road Saw and um, kind, but, but drummer for Sasquatch. Mm -hmm. And so he does some backing vocals now more and more. Uh, I think it'll last up a couple, three songs. So uh, and he, that's an interesting guy that can do a, a bunch of stuff. And besides that element of the band Faye, the other thing I really like is I feel like I feel like Rhoda is kind of directing from the drums. Um, he, all the other players are kind of taking a cue from him. Um, right. as you do from the singer many times but he's really in a sense directing so uh, what am I trying to say here I guess what I'm noticing when I listen to the guitar and bass is that usually you're used to hearing guitar and bass and heavy music at one 
tone, right? Um, a one level of dynamic, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, every once in a while you get those really soft bass notes and they sound really cool when you're contrasting it in a song that's soft right. and loud. And they do a lot of that here to where you, you've got that sensitivity where you need it to be so that it's not... Um, uh, I think this is why I decided to premiere this album and ask, hey, can we bring this to a, our audience? It's because they were really masters of the dynamics on yeah, on, on these songs. Totally giving you props. I mean, I literally... Uh, one thing I enjoy about this is not just that I'm able to share music that I like and believe in, but uh, I get to collaborate with someone who will give me good suggestions and I'll actually end up liking some of them. That's <laughs> Which, cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. You and me get so many people coming at it. I mean, I'm sure mm -hmm. you're at <laughs> seven, eight years of doing this, you know, uh, Doom to Stone uh, must be this must be this onslaught uh, because I get hit up a, a fair amount. But sometimes people hit me up with the wrong styles, like completely out there. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why? Why? Maybe you should watch my show first. I'll sometimes tell them, mm -hmm. like, why don't you go listen to the show and you know get back to me on that? Yeah, if I don't stay on top of my inbox within two days it's up to 500 emails so i have to just like oh my go gosh. through and a lot of times i can just very quickly weed through it without even having to read more than just the the tag yeah. or the title right, right. but um you know but it's a really good band uh right there and then the last one you're kind of going back over to your neck of the woods huh? yeah this one we're going back to portland for the misery men uh, band that I've really liked. Speaking of that grunge theme that has been flowing through this episode in particular, uh, Corey G. Lewis is the mastermind behind the Misery Men, and the the other players have kind of come interchangeably and gone. For this recording, he pulled in talent from Stephen O'Kelly and Caton on drums. Um, names that you might better know are Billy Anderson, the engineer behind Sleep's famous Dope Smoker album. He makes an appearance on bass in this song. Which Mountains Rob Wrong makes an appearance on guitar for this song. We're going to hear one called Houdini Eyes. And uh, Corey really loves to get into themes like magic and um, literature, um, even like detective novels. In his last, last album, he kind of went into some of that. Um, just different things that are part of, of uh, they are a little outside of what most stoner and doom bands tend to detective not to sing about yeah so um he's an interesting guy and his lyrics go into interesting places and the music itself takes a lot from the seattle grunge scene especially nirvana uh, i hear a lot of that kind of in the music uh, other than the whinier side of Kurt's vocals, you can cut those all out. It's just the, you know, the, the grittier first album, Bleach side of, of Nirvana, I guess. You've got a lot of that going on here. Always but, uh, liked Kurt. Always liked Nirvana. Always big some people don't like. College. Some people don't like, you know, uh, some oh. of his vocals. But um, I like my favorite Nirvana album is Incesticide. Actually, it's not actually an official uh, album, but. Um, I my guess it is, but it is isn't. You know. My favorite song, uh, Billy, is Aero Zeppelin. Oh, that's awesome. Off that album. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's that, a great that's, one. That's them just kind of giving the quick nod. So we have to, like, he gave it, they're giving a quick nod to the to the great 70s riff driven rock mm -hmm. on that. Like, and then thus Aero. <laughs> Aero's, yeah, you know, yeah. It was really a great song. I mean, really, really killing. That whole album was super strong it is a very strong album and I mean, it's I, strong to me because it's just so darn weird like they just go off kilter and yeah. um there's some b-sides in there and, yeah uh, a, a sped up version of um <laughs> Polly uh Polly wants a cracker a sped up like almost punk version yeah. of Polly wants a cracker Polly wants a cracker <laughs> yeah it's good I, I really really you know I, I'm, I feel very fortunate I was like a senior in college, I think second year, maybe first year, and Nirvana just hit it. And I'd already was a fan of Alice in Chains and Soundgarden and all those. And so almost that hit, and 
it's like holy shit. I mean that album before it got played to death was it, it's a it's a masterpiece. Absolutely. I, mean, I have to give it that. Even though I don't want to want to hear it because I've heard it so much. <laughs> That's where I'm at too with you know the the second and third albums by Nirvana. I think the second yeah. and third is uh, I kind of want to keep them pristine and and not play them too much. Same with uh, Soundgarden's um, Super Unknown. Um, I don't yeah, know. Good album. Yeah, I, there's just some that are so great that if you hear it too much, it's gonna lose some of its. Uh, magic for you. I don't know. I'm gonna be cheesy here, but when uh, Chris Cornell died, I actually the Saturn played uh, Soundgarden. Yeah, and then throw on some Audio Slave. But I love Sleep. Oh yeah. Chris is easily one of my favorite uh, ever singers, performers, without a doubt, without a doubt. Yeah. 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 He is great stuff. Great. great music. Great everything. So I would say uh, Corey's vocals are much more on the Nirvana side of things. Mm -hmm. um, it's got that gritty, dirty grunge to it, but it's not what we typically refer to as dirty vocals, which are more like death vocals, right? It's just like dirty in a, in a Seattle grunge kind of sense, you know? He's got a gritty, full-bodied vocals, you know, a nice um, doomy beat to it, and then some, some psychedelic ebb and flow going on there as well and always i think the rhythm really is the driving distinctive in the misery men uh, they this is a long song yeah he goes for longer songs they tend to be sort of hypnotic in their effect uh this one is a little bit more of like a what we calling the classical music word a fantasy where it kind of is a little bit more free-flowing it's not as uh it's a little bit more loosely structured um right so the first half doesn't sound like the second half you know right. um they're both kind of distinct but they're connected right they kind of flow and i like that i, I really do progressive. there's a lot of that kind of yeah we call that progressive i guess in the metal world um there's a lot of that kind of songwriting going on right now in, in yeah. newer portland bands that's interesting Got a lot of activity up there man yeah and Corey's just one of the nicest guys you can meet on the street he's at all the the heavy music shows and just uh all around good guy from what i know that's great it's cool very unique cool song here yeah so their new album i guess from what i'm hearing comes out on 420 and so this uh he wanted to re release in time for the super moon so we didn't uh formally debut it but i was one of the early ones to share it and i wanted to make sure it was on the the program this week as well cool and that's that's all i got john all right brother it's been another fun friday night yeah, I'm enjoying our little tradition here. Right on, brother. Well, uh, we'll talk to you down the road here, and maybe next Friday we'll do it again. Hell yeah, and you guys, you can always connect with us through Vegas Rock Revolution, which is John's thing, Doomed and Stone, which is my thing. We're both easily found on the the web. We're all over Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, and uh, our home base is doomedandstone.com. And the, and the songs are on SoundCloud, MixCloud, Spotify, and... Google Play, Taylor. Apple Podcasts. Yep, our podcast is out there on all the major platforms right now. And, hey, we should thank people that they've been listening. Hell yeah. That's crazy. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, yeah. Guys, thanks for sticking and, and hanging out and being part of it. And your feedback is an uh, important part to the whole thing. So and I love, everyone. love reading people's comments. So when you yeah. comment on the tracks, that's pretty special and lets us know kind of what you're in tune with and what you like. And got a lot of love last week on the Loose Fungus track that I opened with. And so it kind of lets right. us know, okay, people are digging some of the things we're taking chances with. And we'll take yeah. more chances like that if, if you let us know. So Positive things are positive things. It's all good in the end. Hell yeah. All right, my brother. I'll talk to you here soon. Sounds like a winner, man. All right, guys. Doom on.
said, bring me instant shy. Preach a lesson without a lie. Open your arm, bring them your peace. Hey, maybe I have seen. You said, bring it home in one piece. Do that if you're lost in here. Carry on and I will break down, break down on your knees to beg me for a long, long ride. Intoxicated you are, angel. 
Does anybody have the time? Five minutes. Okay, that's enough for today. On Monday, we'll talk about another pattern that might be of interest to all of you, cannibalism. Have a good weekend. The proceeding was a presentation of Dune and Stone.